And now, live from Level 5 Productions on the island of Milleronia, it's The Larry Miller Show! Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America, and everyone who's always loved a good Fuller Brush Man. Hi, folks, and welcome back to The Larry Miller Show. I'm Larry Miller, but in a way, aren't we all? And boy, oh boy, is it beautiful today. We are not on Milleronia again, and I can't wait to get back, by the way, and and Colonel Jeff feels the same way, but we are back on the mainland, and there are reasons for that, and, uh, oh, good uh, good family reasons, and uh, but I'll, I'll tell you about some of the stuff, some of the stuff that moves me and to one place or another. And it's gorgeous, though, here, and, uh, of course, that was the Patrick Joseph Orchestra and the Sister Sam Dancers, you might know her as Sister Alice Marie Quinn, who founded Meals on Wheels, and featuring boy tenor Mike Lucking, asking the musical question, is it normal after studying for 18 hours straight to be really excited when the Waltons comes on TV at 3 a.m.? No. No, Mike, it's not. And there's no there's no better or straighter way to say that. Now, it's understandable, kind of. I mean, I get it, and so does Colonel Jeff. And so does everyone out there who's had deep study sessions in high school or college and uh, or any time or to to be a locksmith. And the point is, at that hour, yes, after so much studying, we all understand it. But no, it's not normal. Uh, No, that that doesn't even have to be defined anymore. I got you. I get you. I've had some, uh, some study sessions where I did, oh, a ton of work in a couple of nights. You're up for a couple of nights. And then, uh, but, and I, uh, again, Colonel Jeff and I get you. But uh, it's not the kind of thing you want to brag about. If you're going for a job interview and uh, you're putting your resume in there, well, actually, you know what, you might just say that. Why not? Right, why, why not? And by the way, Patrick Joseph is uh, listens to the show. He's a fan, and he wrote in about me saying I should have had the fish when I say I should have had the fish. I like saying that. It's uh, after after any weird sound comes up, either one Colonel Jeff finds that goes on the back of uh, one of our, well, one of our musical stings there. But uh, if it's if it's a weird enough sound, I almost always say, Oh, I should have had the fish. Uh, but you know what? <laughs> Patrick, uh, wrote in there that, uh, well, y- you know what? He, he, it makes him think of the movie Airplane every time I say it. And Colonel Jeff s- piped up and just said, Me too. He said, Every time you say that, I, that's what I think too. For Airplane was, well, a terrific movie. It's just all sorts of fun. And I think it was the first movie, the first of a handful of those movies. That that those those funny fellows made and um, oh terrific cast and uh, but you know what they uh, on that that airplane everyone who gets sick like really sick had the fish they all had the fish what did you eat I had the fish how about you I I had the fish too and they're they're no good that pilot won't be landing any planes that night but uh, that's what uh, Patrick wrote in about so thanks pal uh i got you i hear you and i hope that study session went well but uh is it normal probably not but i'm glad it was on and i'm glad you felt that way when you needed a little break so uh thank you and by amazon and paypal it's two of the greatest companies i like these guys a lot and uh, I think you know I do that Amazon still does the only company in the world that does three things, folks. They 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 get you whatever you want, whatever you order. 
They'll get it for you. That's number one. Number two, they already have it. They don't even have to send for it. They don't have to send out for it. They don't have to call another company for it. They don't have to see if someone can lend it to you. Nothing. They've got it in their huge warehouse that's a mile long and a mile wide and a mile high and a mile deep. And uh, I don't care where you're from, that's a big warehouse. But boy, oh boy. And Amazon does a good job at that. That's number two. And they're, 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 my favorite thing with them is they they send us a percentage of whatever you order. And that's I think that's a pretty cool company. And whatever you get, they send it here to the Larry Miller Show. And it's in cash. And they, boy, oh boy, we use that money. Not right away. We save it. We put it in a big steel box with a heavy-duty old-time lock on it. And we use that for our next big fancy fried chicken dinner with two drinks beforehand in a different place. And that is the one we so far, so far, for the first big fancy two fried chicken dinners with two drinks in a different place, we have invited Dr. Chris. And he is still studying, well, uh, for his clog dancing doctorate there at the University of Solvang which is just up the coast past Santa Barbara. It's a nice area there, boy, and he's working He's working his clogs off. I'll tell you that. That's a tough major and a tough doctorate. But uh, you know what? That's what Amazon does. You go to Amazon. Get anything you want from them. But don't go. Let us take you there. Don't you use your iPhone or your laptop or anything else you have. What you do is you go to our website, Larry Miller Podcast dot com. Who's on the mountain? Tom Mix. Oh, pardon me. I should have had the fish. But uh, <laughs> anyway, you know what? We'll take you there. We have a banner that says Amazon, and we'll get you there. Get whatever you want, and then we'll get whatever we want. And the next big fancy fried chicken dinner. Maybe, maybe, might, we might invite Dr. Chris again. Three of us have a good time together. And I think we like uh, fancy fried chicken. And I think we like grits. Am I just talking about me? <laughs> anyway, my favorite is Amazon, and my favorite also is PayPal. That's another great company. We have a banner for them also on our website, which, remember, is... Uh, LarryMillerPodcast.com Who's on the mountain? Tom Mix. Boy, sorry, I shouldn't have had the fish. But at any rate, you know what? If you feel want to feel like you're saving the world, PayPal may be the way to go. You know what? What a terrific group. If you And by the way, if you enjoy my show, and why wouldn't you? And you'd like to send a few bucks here to help out. And why wouldn't you? You can do it all through PayPal. And uh, it's just right for the show because instead of saying donate or pay what you like, I always like to say buy us some drinks because there are different levels, level one through five, all the way up to... We're driving to Florida! (laughs) I like that. I think those people should have had the fish, by the way. I think maybe that's why That's why that guy yelled, Yes! <laughs> At any rate, though, uh, PayPal is a great group. And uh, so, you, you know what? Look for the PayPal banner on our website. And, um, yeah, you'll be, you'll be glad you did. And uh, thank you, folks. And that brings me to my favorite part of the show, the joke. Of the week. That's right, and that's not the week as in not strong. That's not the W-E-A-K week. Is it, Colonel Jeff? No. That's the week. That's seven days. Or so they tell us. But this is a good one. Colonel Jeff and I both got a kick out of this, and, well, I hope you do too. A fellow walks into a busy bar, and uh, he stands right in the middle of it, and he pulls out with nothing else said. He pulls out a big forty-five automatic, and he takes the safety off, and he clicks it on, and it's it's locked and loaded. 
and the place gets very quiet all of a sudden, and uh, he says, All right now, some guy in here has been fooling around with my wife, and I want him to step forward right now, or you tell me. You tell me right now who this guy is, and I'm going to take care of him the right way, my way, the old-time way, with this right here. And, whoa, nobody says a word. That place, you, well, you could hear a pin drop, as the old saying goes. Or if, if, if you had just said, my broker is E.F. Hutton, and Hutton says, that quiet. <laughs> he says, uh, there's no answer, and another five seconds goes by, and he says, all right, now you listen to me, you people. I'm here to get justice. So what you do is you point out whoever this guy is, and I'm going to take care of him right now. Do it now, and I'll get out of your way after that. Again, there's nothing. And the guy now starts to get mad, and he says, Folks, you point out the guy who was having an affair with my wife, and I'm going to take care of him. And at that point, somebody yells from the back, You're going to need more ammo. <laughs> wow. He didn't expect that, did he? <laughs> well, I thought that was a pretty good one, and so did Colonel Jeff, and... Well, we hope you did too. And as always, if you like that, pass it on to uh, family or loved ones or friends. And <laughs> I think that's a good one to pass on. And that brings me to my second favorite part of the show, The Poetry Corner. this part of the show too and uh, the wonderful Edgar Albert Guest wrote this poem and he was very popular as uh, when uh, when he lived and he lived till 1959 it was 1880 uh, something I can't remember but uh, he had a long life and everyone was glad he was in it and this is a poem he wrote called Hard Luck and I hope you like it Ain't no use, as I can see, in sitting underneath a tree and growling that your luck is bad and that your life is extra sad. Your life ain't sadder than your neighbor's, nor any harder are your labors. It rains on him, same as you, and he has work he hates to do, and he gets tired and he gets cross, and he has trouble with the boss, you take his whole life through and through, why, he's no better off than you. If whining brushed the clouds away, I wouldn't have a word to say. If it made good friends out of foes, I'd whine a bit too, I suppose. But when I look around and see a lot of men resembling me... And see him sad and see him gay with work to do most every day. Some full of fun, some bent with care, some having troubles hard to bear. I reckon as I count my woes, they're about what everyone knows. The day I find a man who'll say he's never known a rainy day, who'll raise his right hand up and swear in forty years he's had no care, has never had a single blow and never known one touch of woe, has never seen a loved one die, has never wept or heaved a sigh, has never had a plan go wrong, but allus laughed his way along. Then I'll sit down and start to whine that all the hard luck here is mine. That's a good poem, isn't it, folks? And uh, it's written in that twang I performed it in. I hope you like that. Edgar Allan Guest is quite a fellow. Thank you, Edgar. And that brings me to my third favorite part of the show. MMM, the magic movie moment. I like this one a lot, folks, and I saw it when it came out. 
with the rest of my, what would that have been? I guess my third grade class. But I bet a lot of classes went to see uh, this one. It's from 1963 called How the West Was Won. And uh, folks, what a group of people made this movie. Directed by John Ford and and a couple other segments with uh, George Marshall and Henry Hathaway. But this is a John Ford movie. And if that's not good enough for you right there, you know what? You don't need any movies. Directed by John Ford, starring John Wayne, James Stewart, Spencer Tracy, Carl Malden, Agnes Moorhead, Carol Baker, Debbie Reynolds, Gregory Peck, Walter Brennan, Carolyn Jones, George Pappard, Eli Wallach, Lee J. Cobb, and so many other great ones. This is a great movie in story and in acting and directing. And, folks, it's well worth seeing. And I did see that. I remember we went to the movie theater on a... We used to call those field trips. And, uh, boy, in those days... Oh, the teachers took us on great things. I mean, come on. 1963, and they took us all to see how the West was won. And that's become, as you must know, a giant success. A hit movie that people really feel close to. And the magic movie moment for me today... And I told the colonel about this, and he agreed, is the big traffic scene at the end. Spencer Tracy is the narrator of the movie. And, well, after they tell this story about three generations of pioneers and what they go through and how they're connected, good Lord, it's a very good, touching, moving movie. And the magic movie moment for me in this movie... And Colonel Jeff agreed, was the big traffic scene at the end. Now, that may not sound with the West. Wait, a this, but this is the Old West. This goes from pioneer days up through the Civil War. And after that, boy, oh, it's, it's, it's a terrific plot line. And also lots of love and action. You know, like your house and mine. <laughs> but it's, it's a good movie. And it's very good, in fact. But that last scene, it's at the end. Spencer Tracy is the narrator. And in order to draw it all together, he says, but here we are today in modern times and in the present. And and, uh, he said, that's why we're grateful to these folks. I can't remember the exact words, but they did it. They did it all. They did everything that was hard and they made it. And now we get to be here too. And they're showing they had filmed all the new freeways here in Los Angeles in the area oh, for, you know, 10, 20, 30 miles and, you know, worth of, well, freeways. And they go around in circles and they go, there are targets and they have them from the air, from helicopters. And, uh, oh, you know, they're loaded with cars, tons of cars and and uh, not uh, dead traffic, you know, but, oh, they're filled. They're f- filled to the rim. But... uh The reason I like that so much, uh, Spencer Tracy, God bless him, he's always a great actor, and all the folks who made this movie were saying with that last scene, that's right, we should be proud of this because look what we have now. They weren't kidding, by the way, of uh, all these new freeways, and now we can get along with them and go wherever you want. But even when I was a kid, at every point in life, I must have seen this movie 30 times, and I always I remember thinking, wow, did that, didn't they know that was maybe kind of not going to work out so well? That, but the answer is no, they didn't know. They, they were proud of what they had made and what we were using. And that was the freeways, so many of them, you know, three, five, seven, ten, fifty freeways all over the place. And that was nothing. That was just when they filmed it in, in 1963. And I thought it was worth it. I I just, I think this is a terrific movie anyway. And it does have love and action and good and bad in it. And uh, yes, it'll give us something all, you and me and Colonel Jeff too. It'll give us something all to smile about for the rest of our lives because, well, that movie for the next thousand years, people, even when we've stopped using our bodies and just, transport from spaceship to ship people are still going to watch that and just say so did they like the freeways did they like all that traffic they sound proud of it well they were and i'm glad they were 
But that's the magic movie moment for me, about how proud they were with, well, what we had made out of it. See it sometime. If you haven't seen How the West Was Won, you'll be glad you did. If you've seen it like me 30 times, see it again. What a cast. What a wonderful cast. I met George Papard when I was in college. His son and I were in the same fraternity. And uh, Brad Papard, boy, oh boy, he was a great guy. And George came for one of the parents' weekends, or one of when he was free, he came by, and he was walking down the staircase in the front hall there in our fraternity, and I was kind of in the holy macro mood that of, wow, wow, it's George Papard. He's great. And he was then, and his stuff still is. So you know what, folks? <laughs> Go see that movie. You'll be glad you did. As opposed to Colonel Jeff, by the way, who was stuck this morning behind two street sweepers on the freeway. How many chances do you get to say that sentence? This has struck me for years, since I was a kid. Street sweepers, in all times, in all ways, are the one of the few things we, we've never changed. I mean, that street sweeper that Colonel Jeff saw today, those two street sweepers, were, you know, the same. All street sweepers have been the same for about 80 years, haven't they? Back through, well, 80s, 70s, 60s, back through into the 30s, the 20s, when street sweepers were invented to sweep the streets. And they they haven't changed in all that time. They have that uh, gigantic big wheel that rolls in the back and uh, rolls everything up and uh, rolls it up into the middle of the engine there where the guy is riding on top. And, well, it sweeps the street. And then he's got those two brush wheels in the front that, well, just, you know, get everything that he goes over and, once again, throw it right back into the middle of the uh, of the whole machine there and keep our streets clean. But there's just one tiny thing that always that always struck me. They don't do it, though. That machine, for the last 80 years, picks up nothing. It just doesn't do it. And, I mean, it goes over after that thing passes, and they don't race by. They do it slowly. I've always liked the guys on it. You wave to him. He waves to you. And uh, he's, a, he's a street sweeper. And uh, But they go over every as soon as he passes, every pack of cigarettes, still there. Every can of beer, can of Coke, still there. Everything, plastic, metal, whatever it is, still there, just flat. Now it's flat because he went over it, so it's crushed. And that's all fine with me. This is not something that's made ever made me mad. But I always think, well, let me just watch this guy again, again, since I was a kid. Just see if they changed these things, if they made them any better, if they pick up anything. And whether it's food that was chewed, again, anything. You must have seen this. You must know this, too. That, uh, you know, phew, they leave nothing. So I always wave back to the guy and think, how do you like that? Street sweepers, the same. If Martians landed and saw our street sweepers, well, they would just call back and just say, we can take these people in 10 minutes. So, you know, they their street sweepers are terrible. And uh, you know what? And it's the same. Colonel Jeff and I started talking because, yes, it crushes everything and leaves it there. But it's the same with carpet sweepers. Do you remember those? Did you have one of those? Did your parents have one of those And when you were a kid? So it's not electric, a carpet sweeper. And it just has, well, it sweeps the carpet. It has a roll again that just rolls as you push it. And every single time, I remember my mom and maybe you remember yours, it'd go over a spot in the rug there. And uh, then she'd stop and look at it because it did nothing. It didn't pick up what she was going over. And uh, we were remembering, boy, she'd have to bend down and pick up a little piece of of uh, fluff carpet or a little, uh, you know, just whatever was on there. And she had to pick it up and then look at it. And he, I remember this, too. And then never 
threw it out, just could have walked over and thrown that out, but didn't. You put it back on the carpet lightly to go over it again with the carpet sweeper and pick it up that way, which it never did. That's, again, it's fine, not the end of the world, but <laughs> just couldn't do that. We're, you know what? We're good at lots of things, folks, but our lives in this great country, our American lives, have not been cleaner with anything with the word sweep in it. I, I think I figured that out. I asked Colonel Jeff before, is it just the word sweeper? If it says sweeper, does that mean it will do nothing? And uh, well, we decided maybe that's why vacuum cleaners actually work, because they didn't say vacuum sweepers. They call them cleaners because they're electric and they work. And you know what? It reminded me, wasn't there an old stereotype of vacuum cleaner salesman who'd come to the house and they, they, and I mean, again, for 80 years, for the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, especially those days, they would, he'd ring the bell and the housewife would come in the middle of the afternoon and open the door. The second she opened the door, he would reach in and toss a cup full of dirt right on the carpet. Wasn't that the old stereotype? And she said, what the, what, what? And he'd hold his hand up and say, don't be upset, ma'am. I'm going to show you the best way to clean that. And I'm going to clean it right up now myself. And you'll be amazed how I do it. And, uh, well, that I guess they thought for all those years that was a great way to Get your foot in the door, so to speak. Uh, Colonel and I thought it was really, the bottom line was just, uh, it just created a good way to get punched in the nose. You didn't want to have her husband there on his day off in the uh, in a pair of slacks with bedroom slippers and a white t-shirt and the folded newspaper in one hand and a kind of a burned down cigar in the mouth. You didn't want him coming in there just saying, oh, what's all this? What the heck is this? Did you do that? Did you throw that dirt down there? What do you think's coming next? <laughs> in 1951 or 31 or 21. Well, what's coming next is his big day off fist. That's what's coming next. But uh, you know what? Maybe but vacuum cleaners work... That was the old stereotype, though. I seem to remember that. And he'd say, that carpet salesman, boy, oh boy, you know, uh, it always, it worked with him. Didn't they do that for, well, 80 years? They'd toss in, reach the hand in, toss that cup of dirt right on the rug, clean it up, and uh, just say to the housewife, ma'am, let me plug this right in. Just point me right to the plug, because uh, you didn't want to have leave time for people to speak, where they might say things like, would you please get out? But... <laughs> he would say he'd plug it in and turn it on and it was out already in his hand and he'd run over that and and uh went and pick it up and clean it up and it wasn't there afterwards and uh, that's when she could punch him in the nose by the way that's why <laughs> there was plenty of time for that but it worked with vacuum cleaner salesmen never seemed to work with abbott and costello anything comedians i think made fun of all right, Lou, you take this side of the street, and I'll take this side, and then we'll we'll see who sells more. Well, it made me think, and I said to the colonel, I said, whatever happened to door-to-door -door salesmen? And I didn't know. I still don't know. He doesn't know. I mean, we're, that was a popular way to make a living, wasn't it? It was a good people would go door-to-door, -door, ring the bell, and say, weren't that's why I mentioned Fuller Brush in the beginning of the show. Weren't Fuller Brush men, I mean, the name, he was the Fuller Brush man. They were popular and successful, if I remember. We had those, when I was a kid, and this was uh, growing up on Long Island in New York, well, we had uh, a couple of times a year, Fuller Brush man would come, ring the bell, and boy, oh boy, that sample case looked like it weighed, well, 100 pounds, it probably did. And he'd be there with a big smile and a, well, and a suit or a sport jacket and slacks. I mean, they all looked good. They wanted to look good. They didn't want to look like bums coming to your door there. 
And I remember them coming to our house when I was a kid. Nobody was suspicious of door-to-door salesmen in those days. I don't seem to remember anyone. That, that was how they made their living. And people knew, oh, the Fuller Brush Man is coming today. Oh, the Fuller Brush Man came today. And I don't remember actually anything else. Are there door salesmen today? Well, the Internet, obviously. That's, you know, what the Colonel and I began to talk about. Sure, you can get anything. And in fact, by the way, I looked up Fuller Brush Man on the Internet, and they're still in business. Somebody's in business. Uh, the Fuller Brush Company. I don't know if the company has three family members around a table with peeling Formica on the top, but they're around, and they, they, they're selling Fuller Brush things, and they have you know, a whole catalog on the Internet there. Well, I hope they keep going. Why not? Why the heck not, folks? And uh, is anything else sold? I remember selling things, a couple of things door to door. My senior year in high school, we had every senior class, every year, would have magazine sales. That was the way the senior class uh, made some money. The same magazine company that was selling them, you know, well, magazines to everyone. And they would uh, they would uh, come by with all and meet all the seniors and the president of the class and such and uh, in the uh, well in the dining hall at school. That sounds too fancy, actually, for where you ate in high school, doesn't it? It's not a dining hall exactly; it's a chow line, but that's okay. But I did pretty well at that at magazine sales, and then you go around. They say, "Hey, here's the thing. Here's your folder." Here's your list. Here's your where you write down the names, and here's the price list. And it was mo. It, it was just as far as I knew. It was just prices the way you would get from any subscription. That's about what it cost. And I, well, I ran around our neighborhood and about a, well, about a half mile in every direction, and I sold pretty well. And uh, I'm not bragging about that. I'm just remember I did very well. And I won some pillows. There, there was no money we actually won, come to think of it. I guess that the magazine people wanted the money. And that's fine. That's how they're making a living. But they give us... I, I was, I think, the number one or two salesman in, in our senior class. And I won some pillows. I don't mean to sleep on, but you could toss them on your bed because they were made out of, out of yellow uh, things that a stop sign made out of yellow that was six sided or eight sided, whatever it is, and it said stop or don't stop on it, you know, or something like that. Kind of a magazine joke, but I mean, uh, I, I did very well. And I had one, another one that was in rectangle form that was supposed to be a joke license plate. I can't remember what it was a joke of. I think it said New York on the bottom, and then it. They were all yellow, actually, come to think of it, with black letters, all the pillows. Yeah, it wasn't going to look like a stop sign. <laughs> it was just that was too much, too much bother. But I did really well with that. And uh, you know what? I sold also VX6 battery additive. There was an ad in one of the comic books I was reading, so it shows you the level of salesmen they were going for, by the way. And I guess I was 11... 11 years old, and uh, they sent me two cases of VX6 battery additive and instructions about how you do it. That is how you make a sale. So you say to the housewife, uh, now, ma'am, if I could trouble you, please, for uh, a water glass so I can uh, put in some water, or, or you fill it halfway with water, and then I'll show you what the VX6 does. Which is, remember, you're 11 years old, and it's it just wasn't a really good system. I did that for a while, a little while, meaning uh, three days or so, and uh, I don't think I sold any. But, uh, you know, that is still around too, folks. Now, that was when I was, when I, as I said, when I was 11. And you know what? Today, you can look up in the, the same thing on the Internet. VX-6 battery additive. There's still people who write in, this stuff is great. And uh, someone else, they could use a job themselves selling door-to-door. But you know what? 
I was glad to do that. I, I trusted any door-to-door salesman, and I trusted myself, too. I was just there trying to sell things. And, uh, well, door-to-door salesman today, again, the Internet. Uh, Colonel Jeff remembered a story that his mom's best friend, when he was go- growing up, they didn't have any fuller brush salesmen, and uh, he kind of grew up in farmland, and they... Uh, But so no one got to their door that way. But his mom's best friend's son uh, was, well, kind of someone who was a little, he was well a down and outer. He was only late teens, but he had the gumption to pull it together. And he said, you know what? I'm going to get a job and I'm going to straighten myself out here and I'm going to clean up and I'm going to. And he became a vacuum cleaner salesman door to door. And uh, his mom asked Colonel Jeff's mom if they, Colonel Jeff's family, would give him a family to pitch to, that they were going to be, they said, can you just come, uh, be all be home there at two in the afternoon tomorrow, and he'll come by so he can practice his pitch. And they were nice. It's a nice thing to do. They said, sure, send him by. And he did. He came by and knocked on the door and they were all there, the kids and his mom and dad, and they were all there. They're not exactly sure what they're supposed to do, but give this uh, give this kid a chance, I guess. But Jeff t- Colonel Jeff told me that it was kind of funny because he wanted to look good like the other salesman. So he had his church suit on and uh, a pair of shoes with laces. Yeah, you know, and a shirt and tie. So uh, that he could look good. But also then he had all the long hair. I mean, really long, bushy hair. Like really long. And just, you know, bushy, shaggy hair. And a bushy, shaggy mustache. Like a crazy mustache. And uh, from 1971. And so, as Colonel Jeff mentioned, it kind of made him look a little creepy. You know, the effect of that, of the suit, the church suit and the shirt and tie and a pair of laced up shoes and that head with the hair that was still just flying. The hair was just, that just sprang out all over the place and the mustache that went way down below the lips. So it was a little frightening, pretty much. But you know what? I said to him, and it's true, and I say the same thing to you, well... They did the right thing, that he and his family gave him a chance to, well, sell his vacuum cleaners and give him, pitch what he was going to do, help him practice a good way to sell a vacuum cleaner door to door. And uh, what's he doing now? I think it's fair to say, God only knows. But he was trying, good for him, good for that fella. He was trying it. At 18 or 19, he said, you know what? I'm going to put on this suit. And uh, he didn't think about having the haircut or something, or even just trying to mat it down. But I thought it was a good afternoon all the way around. And I said to Colonel Jeff, your family did a good thing. You get a gold star for that day of uh, your mom saying to her friend, why, sure, tell him to come on by. We'll be here. And you know what, folks, that's, uh, I know that's good. So do you. So does Colonel Jeff. And we all know the same things. You uh, you know that well, that Homer is Homer and Pluto is a planet. So remember, folks, as always, if you walked out of bed today and had a job to go to and a home to come back to and someone there who cares about you, folks... The game's over and you've won. And you don't need to sell that door-to-door. Be well and we'll see you here next time.